This screencast involves the Tukey Kramer procedure. The Tukey Kramer procedure is applied only when the ANOVA hypothesis test is decided in favor of H1. That is, in favor of the hypothesis that at least two population means differ. The Tukey Kramer procedure allows determination of which pairs of population means can be considered different without exceeding the air probability indicated by the significance level. In this problem, 5%. There are three steps. In the first step, we compute the absolute value of the differences between each pair of sample means. So we could go to the ANOVA output and we could start computing the difference between 69.84 and 41.25 and take the absolute value of that difference and then the difference between 69.84 and 56.56 and take its absolute value and then the difference between there are six pairs of sample means so you would need to compute the differences between all six pairs of sample means that would complete step one step two involves computing a quantity called the critical range the critical range is the product of two numbers. The first number is referred to as Q alpha, and we'll talk more about it in a moment. And the second number is the square root of a quantity you will also have to compute. The Q alpha number is a number you can look up in a table. It's referred to as the upper tail critical value from a studentized range distribution with c degrees of freedom for the numerator and n minus c degrees of freedom for the denominator. Note that the numerator degrees of freedom in this case is c, not c minus 1 as was the case for the f distribution. The MSW number that appears within this square root is obtained from the ANOVA table on the Excel output. We can get it off of here. The MSW number, here's the within groups um, variation and here's the MS column. So the MSW number we'll be using is 330.2. In uh, computing this quantity we'll have to put in here also the number of observations there is in the jth sample and here are the number of observations there are uh, in the J prime sample thinking in terms of maybe the J sample as being the first sample and the J prime sample being the second sample or whatever combination of samples we're computing the difference for. Now our examples will all be the balance case where the number of sample observations in each sample are going to be the same. For our emergency room waiting room times, every uh, sample has exactly 15 observations. That means for us that we'll only need to make one numerical calculation for a critical range that we can use for each pair of means. For those of you without a textbook, you can simply Google student range distribution and you'll see a number of Q tables coming up. I just tried it. The final step in the Tukey Kramer process is simply comparing the absolute values in the differences of sample means with the value of the critical range. Whenever one of these absolute values exceeds the value of the critical range, your decision is it's okay to view those two population means as different. I've moved to the next page. Let's apply the Tukey Kramer process to our hospital waiting time example. Step one involves computing the absolute values of the differences in 
sample means. So we begin by taking the 69.84 from the main campus, subtracting off the 41.25 minutes from the uh, satellite one, and taking that absolute value, we'll get 28.59 minutes. And then the main campus minus satellite two, absolute value 13.28, etc., to pick up all six possible pairs of sample means. We then compute the critical range. And again, the Q value will um, be obtained using the table in the back of the textbook, page 747, or um, from a Q table you can pick up um, on the net. The value you're looking for will be for a significance level of 5%. Remember, here's a source of error for a quiz. You want to have a C there, the total number of populations or the total number of samples, as opposed to the C minus 1 that appears for the F distribution, 4 in this case now. And this is the same N minus C as appears for the F distribution, the 56 degrees of freedom for the denominator. The MSW comes straight from the uh, ANOVA output, that's the uh, 330.2 quantity. And in our balance case, and we're going to do examples just with the same number of observations in each sample, these two numbers will be 15. Otherwise, we'd be computing different critical ranges for different pairs of populations because the sample sizes would be different. Making the calculation in this case, um, the critical range is 17.548. To complete the problem, we simply compare each one of these uh, differences in sample means, in absolute value, with the critical range. When we make our comparisons with the critical range, we observe that there are only two pairs of sample means that have absolute values that exceed the critical range. Our conclusion is that only the main campus and satellite one and the main campus and satellite two have significantly different pairs of mean waiting times. Thus, if we're only willing to take a 5% chance of being incorrect, we can only conclude that these two pairs of population mean waiting times are different.